First, I would like to congratulate Dr. Green for this well-written paper titled Diagnosis and Management of Obesity-Induced Lymphedema. It is timely and important paper with recent increasing interest in understanding and treating lymphedema. Obesity is a major risk factor for developing secondary lymphedema following radiation and or lymphadenectomy. The greater the BMI, the more likely the patient is to develop lymphedema. Obese patients may have compromised lymphatic function at baseline and thus are more prone to develop lymphedema after suffering a second hit from nodal radiation or lymphadenectomy. Obesity itself has been shown recently to be a cause of lymphedema, termed obesity-induced lymphedema. Obesity-induced lymphedema can occur once a patient's body mass index exceeds 50. One hypothesis is that as the patient's BMI rises, the amount of lymph produced increases, exceeding the ability to transport the fluid. In addition, excessive pressure from the weight of the tissue might collapse the lymphatic vessels. Another hypothesis is that lymphatic vasculature is damaged as the size of the extremity increases. And inflammation from increased subcutaneous adipose may destroy lymphatic vasculature. Obesity-induced lymphedema always affects the lower extremities first and affects both extremities. If an individual has unilateral findings, it is unlikely he or she has obesity-induced lymphedema. Patients typically state that their extremities did not become enlarged until they gained significant weight and eventually noted swelling of their legs. All patients with possible obesity-induced lymphedema should undergo lymphocentigraphy to determine whether or not they have lymphatic dysfunction. Definitive management consists of weight loss and referral to a bariatric surgical center. And despite a significant BMI reduction, lymphedema may not improve, resulting in chronic morbidity. If a patient can reduce BMI below 50, there is 50% chance that lymphatic function will return to normal, indicating perhaps obesity-induced lymphedema may be reversible in certain cases. And even if lymphatic dysfunction remains, it may be improved, and the patient's quality of life also will be better. Definitive surgical intervention, including suction assist lipectomy, resection of excess tissues, and microsurgery, should not be performed until the patient's weight has stabilized following massive weight loss. Lymphedema in obese individuals significantly affects their quality of life and further increases healthcare costs. It is important to recognize obesity-induced lymphedema so that weight loss interventions can be instituted before potentially irreversible lymphatic dysfunction occurs.